Welcome, don't shake your head at me. Welcome to Dinner for Dad, episode five. Bless her. Um, today I will be making a casserole. Um, I just sort of made this up in my head today. I didn't know what to make, so I just thought, I went to gro the grocery store and got some stuff that was on sale um, and thought it would taste well together. So we're doing a butternut squash and um, lamb casserole. So um, I've already kind of started. Um, what I did is I got these packages of pre, um, I don't know what that's called, that jaggedy cut, but whatever, um, uh, pre-cut butternut squash, but you could cut it yourself if you want. Um, already started sauteing up some garlic in olive oil and have added the butternut squash to it. I'm about to start cooking the lamb. And I, I get I got lamb because it was on sale and I've never cooked lamb before and it sounds kind of delicious, so we're going for it. And then on the side, we're gonna do a really simple, um, our garden is full of tomatoes right now, so I picked uh, a bunch of our tomatoes and we're gonna do a very, very simple side dish just with tomatoes, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, salt, and Parmesan cheese baked for about 10, 15 minutes in the oven on 350. So, I've not added any flavor yet to the squash. Uh, I need another utensil while cooking the raw lamb. <clears throat> I haven't added any flavor to the lamb either. What I'm going to do is just bake this squash until it gets a little bit soft because then it's going to go in the oven for about 30 minutes to bake more. Um, I'm flavoring everything just with salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, which is just, I don't know, dad buys fancy salt. How we and a little bit of onion powder. Uh -oh. Brand new. Puffer fish? P -p -p Puffer fish. Nope. Don't give a fucker fish. Yeah. Alright, and three. Wait, that wasn't in the thing? It could be two, one. Editing, go. Go. Uh, I'm going to season the meat with the same thing. A little bit of onion powder. A little bit of Himalayan sea salt. Um, and we're just going to cook this up. I don't know, you know, again, it's gonna bake. Don't eat that, Lester. Well, it's raw, Dog, it's, dogs can eat raw meat. Too late anyway. Um, so yeah. As this, okay, so um, the, the squash is getting a little bit brown, which is nice, that's how I want it. So I'm gonna lower this and add some cream. I just use heavy whipping cream. And this is going to sort of create a little sauce situation that we will then mix it all together and pop it in the oven. Okay, a casserole. My favorite thing to make because you just plop a bunch of ingredients together. flavor addition for the lamb. So I'm going to just, too much cinnamon is going to fuck it up. So we're going to be really careful and just add a little tiny bit of cinnamon just to add some fun, I don't know, flavor to our lamb. That's good. And then I want a little bit of a spice kick, so I'm adding um, some chili powder as well. About that much. A few sprinkles. Dad doesn't like when food is too spicy. And then we're going to cook, um, finish this in the pan until it's mostly not red or pink. 
Um, and then I'm going to do these tomatoes, uh, which I'm proud because they're from the garden. One. <laughs> All I'm going to do with the tomatoes is a little bit of salt. Just cover them a little bit. And a little bit of olive oil, just drizzle it. It comes out faster, this thing, so I got Be good and then a little bit of balsamic and I'm hoping I've never done this before actually but I'm hoping it's just gonna kind of make the, the natural flavor of the tomatoes just pop and then parm a little bit of parm cheese on top because you guys know by now that dad loves parmesan cheese okay and then we will bake that when there's about 15 minutes um, remaining on baking the casserole. It is time to combine almost time. So it's not fully cooked, but that's okay because again, like I said, it's going to bake in the oven for 30 minutes. So any of that little remaining pink is going to be all baked in. So we're good. Again, I've never done this before. This is totally a uh, dinner for dad winging it episode. So we've got the combination of the lamb and the squash and the garlic. Oh, oh, chunk of lamb. Just oh, like I said, I've never done this before. I'm just kind of putting it out on a lamb. I don't know the joke. <laughs> what did you say? He told me a joke to say when I got it wrong. So oh, I'm so keeping that in. Keep rolling. <laughs> Keep rolling. Yeah, we're winging. We're winging. We're winging it. <laughs> She's out. <laughs> Come on in. We've got a special guest appearance. Um, my dude Randall. Hi, I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dinner for dad and also Randall helps dad move heavy things. I got a strong deck. That's what they're ready for. Bye! <laughs> now, we're combining, or we're putting all the food into a casserole dish. Okay. Now, as I'm looking at this, um, I'm thinking a couple of things. One, I wish I had fresh parsley because I think that would be really good to sprinkle on. But I don't, so I'm going to use dried parsley. But it's definitely lacking in some green. Not tarragon. No. Ooh, rosemary. Rosemary and lamb? That sounds good. All right. No par I might have some fresh rosemary. Uh, uh, so, uh, as I was saying, like, it's missing some greens, and I just went outside and remembered that I have chives, um, growing, so I am gonna just, like, chop up these chives and sprinkle them on top. I'll hopefully not oh, chop my finger. Hey, come here. Um, someone showed me this once. When you're chopping... Oh, it was, it was my producer that showed me. <laughs> what a guy. Um, okay, you want to come watch your fingers? You, so you don't chop your fingers off, you curl your fingers in like that, so, like that? Yep. And chop like that. Keep your thumb behind your fingers. Keep your thumb behind your fingers. And watch your pinky, because I want to stick out. And watch your pinky. <laughs> so we've got the chives. Yum. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of rosemary, because I got excited about that. I wish I had fresh rosemary, but I don't. And then, as I do with most things, we're gonna top it with cheese. Um, again, this is this is just a, a really yummy parm, hard parm. 
and then um, remember dad every dad likes parm so we're gonna use a lot and it's probably like brown on top of for 30 minutes but I'm gonna set the, the timer for 15 minutes and then at 15 is when we put the tomatoes in and let both bake for another 15. All right, a couple of little beers to go with our casserole. All right, this is the end result of our lamb butternut squash casserole. And the taters. Ooh, those look good. I'm excited to um, uh, feed this to dad because, like I said before, it, it was a total um, first time adventure. I've been kind of going back and forth about the cinnamon. I have a little bit of regret, so we'll see. I forgot that dad doesn't like cinnamon. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so we'll see if he likes it or not. Um, puffer fish. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'm excited to eat. Join me in a minute when me and dad dine. Dad and I dine. Um, I call this. How come you don't know me again? Here, I meant, this <laughs> I meant to give you the one with more. Uh, I call this uh, butternut squash lamb casserole. I made it up today as I go, as I went. Um, so. What is a butternut lamb? <laughs> butternut squash. Oh. And lamb. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so. That was a breed of Cheers. Cheers. Asante. Asante. Ooh, that's a good beer. It is. All right. So I, first thing before we have our conversation, I need you to taste it and tell me if you like it. Okay. Because there's an ingredient that I put in that I forgot that you don't like. Cottage cheese? Tata cheese? No tata cheese. It's delicious. Yay! It's delicious. Mmm. So one of these times, I, I want you to do it at an hour where I'm not coming in straight from work. Because anybody who sees this is going to think I'm a bum because I'm always wearing my work clothes. I think everybody watching knows that you're not a bum mm. and that knows that you're a very hard worker. But do they? <laughs> Well, maybe three some do, and then then they're not, they they know I'm a bum. They're not just speculating. <laughs> what uh, you've been working really hard on this project and getting very frustrated. What's the project all about? There's never a project that doesn't involve frustration. Well. I'm building, I built, because you know you helped me stain it. My septic walkway. Because it covers the septic tanks, which I always thought were ugly. And sometimes you even get a little odor from it uh, if you're outside and the wind's going the right way. Poop. Now, sewage. Sewage. But now, <clears throat> it's beautiful and it doesn't smell. Mm-hmm. And you were, you built um, an arch way to uh, frame it. What was the motivation, inspiration behind that? I don't know. Just pretty? Just thought it'd be pretty. Cool. That it was a guy or that 
Well, and some people think I'm charming. Well, okay, two things. Two questions. If a woman told you you were charming, how would you feel differently? Um, is she pretty? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, the, she's the yeah. model. She's the model. Mm. <laughs> then I would just feel like she's lying. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Dad went blackberry picking yesterday, um, or two days ago, uh, to make our um, annual uh, fruit-infused vodka. And when we, were, um, when we were picking, you said that the smell of blackberries takes you, takes you into another world. Mm -hmm. You want to share more about that? Uh, well, yeah, I, just when I was young, when we first moved to Seattle, I used to go visit my uh, my cousins, clearly at my aunt's house and uncle's house. Where, in Seattle? In Seattle. Well, actually, it was two houses down from Jimi Hendrix's house. Oh! But that was in the early 60s. Um, like 62, 63, before he was famous. So we didn't know we were walking by Jimi Hendrix's house every day. Oh. Sometimes two or three times a day. Whoa. Yeah. It was just another little brick house in the Greater Valley. Huh. But, you know, when I was picking them and smelling, I was immediately transported back to that street, hmm. that particular place, where we used to always go, it was at the end of the street. I don't think there's any empty lots now in Rainier Valley area. Yeah. But, but at that time there were, and they were all covered with blackberries. And so that's, it's like whenever I smell a, a really ripe apricot. Mm -hmm. And there's some psychology to that too, you know, that, that I read that, that smells, trigger more memories than any other senses. Hmm. Taste or, I don't know, touch, hmm. whatever. But when I smell a ripe apricot, it immediately transports me back to when I was, I don't know, maybe 10, 9, 10 years old. We had a, an apricot tree in the back of our, in our backyard at the farmhouse. And I used to, in August or whenever they were, July, whenever they were ripe, I would climb that tree and sit up there and eat apricots until I was sick. Oh. They were, and I, you can't find apricots. I sound like a, they don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> but the truth is, I don't think I've ever had an apricot that tastes hmm. as good as that. But a ripe apricot, that's where I go. Hmm. Um, is there more tomatoes? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like a little bit right. more of both. He's having seconds, everybody. Even with the cinnamon. I didn't really, so you- It was a tiny was, bit. Yeah, like a hint that, that maybe just enhance other flavors because I didn't really taste yeah. cinnamon. And the only, the only carbs in this are the squash, which is a very small amount, um, and a very small amount in tomatoes. But. Well, it was another successful dinner for dad meal. <laughs> you, very successful. Maybe we should start doing a rating system. Like, on a scale of, you kick me out. No. Because it's so terrible to. No, because it gets boring giving five star ratings every time. Oh. <laughs> there you have it. Um, <clears throat> you are a good cook. There is no question about that. Thanks, Dad. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I, uh, again, would like to ask that you share um, Dinner for Dad, that you go on to Rotcast, R-O-T-T-C-A-S-T. T S and like all of his stuff because he's my producer and without him this would not happen and 
we're going to be releasing a contest soon, uh, and the winner will receive a free Dinner for Dad apron. More details about that will be shared on Facebook. What's the contest? It's going to be um, best recreation of a Dinner oh. for Dad food. So it'll be photos and... Um, and then finally, if you, you know, two more things. One, if you are interested in being a guest on Dinner for Dad, contact me through Facebook, through Dinner for Dad uh, Facebook. And what's the last thing? If you have recommendations for food that you want to see me cook, or if there are things that you want to know about Dad um, that you want, you know, us to discuss and share with you. He's a very interesting man. So, all right. Cheers.